Welcome to Sick Baggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve and today we're going to be doing a handlebar install on this 15 Road Glide. Now what we have going on the Road Glide here are the Road 6 Customs Naked Bars. This is the black version and as you can see right here there's some holes in the end here and here and Road 6 offers a couple of different caps. You can get those caps raw or you can get them black. We got the black ones to go in here. Those bars look pretty cool on a Road Glide guys. I've seen those bars on a couple of different Road Glides before in the past. Absolutely love the way that they feel. Uh, we actually got to ride a Road Glide one day that had them on there and I fell in love with the bars. And to be honest with you guys, they are awesomely priced. With the Road Glide, significantly easier than doing a Street Glide. A Street Glide's really not too bad. There's just a few more extra steps. You gotta move the fairing and all that good stuff. And with the Road Glide, you don't have to do all that stuff. You got a fixed fairing. Everything is easily accessible right here in the top. All you have to do is just remove the uh, gauge cluster assembly right here, which is couple of screws and uh, you're right down to where you need to be on the handlebars so let's get the camera over here and start this install now i've seen a couple of different guys do this a couple of different ways and uh, with the road glide to take this gauge cluster off i've seen them take this ignition out absolutely no reason to take that out uh, under this you'll see just a little black shroud there's a little bitty piece right down in the middle that you can push in with a pick and you can lift that up and pull that right out That comes out just like that, it hooks on the inside, and there's your little clip. You wanna get that out of the way first, and then you've got a screw here and a screw here. It's a T25, so we're just gonna remove those. Now once you get those two screws removed, this will actually just lift up from the back of the bezel housing. You can kick your ignition over, you can pull this up, and it'll actually go around it like that. On the back side of your gauge cluster, you've got a little clip here, this wire harness that plugs into the middle. Clip on this side, clip on this side. I don't have fingernails, so I just use that same little pick and get that off. Now that's off out of the way. Then you have these switches in the bottom. Now mine are false, there's nothing on them, but there's still plugs on the back of them. That just keeps them taut up there in case you wanna install stuff later, but you're just gonna unplug them just like that. And you can just remove that cluster just like that. So once we get in here, we have a few wires that we need to disconnect. You'll see the wires coming out of the back of the handlebars here. Very easy to follow them out. You've got one from the left side that goes up to this little tree here at the top. And then you've got one from the right side that's got a double that comes out. So you've got three on this little uh, electric tree right here. If you follow the throttle by wire cable out of the right side, you've got a zip tie on there. You need to cut that off so you can pull it out. And pull this out and this varies on different models guys i've seen some on the on the 15 and older road glides this big clip right here will actually be one of these little bitty ones right here and uh, fortunately for us we've got the one with the big clip and that big clip won't pull through the bar so we will actually have to depend that here in a little bit this is just a little tab that you push up right here if you have a hard time getting it you can use your pick again but you just want to push up on the tab and pull that out you want to get all three of those disconnected. We've got our throttle by wire here, which is just a big clip that you just push in, pull out. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and get our perch mounts off of both sides because you've got your fluid lines, your master cylinder lines that come up. We want to disconnect those. You're going to take that T25 on the back of this clamshell clamp that goes around your switches. Remove those. One at the top, one at the bottom. Now this front's just gonna come off. You can set that off to the side. And then you've got the two bolts right here in the front, T25 again. You can pull those out. You've got the front of your perch mount, and then you can pull this off the back, and then that's where your back cap's gonna be. You can actually just go ahead and lift up and pull that off so it doesn't fall and hit anything. Now from here, I'll take just a bag or a towel or something and put over this because we have to let this swing actually until we get ready to put it back on and we don't want it scratching any paint or anything. We're gonna do the exact same thing on this side, the T25 here, loosen it. One on top, one on bottom. Got the one on the front, the one on the back. Take the front of your perch off. And with this one, like I said before, if you don't have a crown royal bag or something like that, put a towel around it, put a piece of painter's tape around it like that. Now from here, you have to take this little cover off. 
your trip switch and underneath there there's just a little clip you need to get under that flathead screwdriver or pick or something you push up pull out and slide that off you can go ahead and take the front off slide the back off so the left hand grip you have different styles you have some that just slip on and tuck in behind like these do i would say most guys usually when they're in this step would go ahead and replace their grips with something better you can put channel locks on these whatever you need to to twist this and get that glue broke loose and get this pulled off these were actually glued on really good and i had to use channel locks to twist and twist and twist uh, we'll put these back on just to show you how to put the stock ones back on however in a future video we will be replacing these so once you get the glue broke loose and this was way too much glue thank you harley davidson for that go ahead and get that grip off now from here you just have the four bolts that hold the handlebars on it's a quarter inch hex head go ahead and pull those out shove that out take the top plate off pull your handlebar straight up hey guys i hope you're enjoying this free video if you like this video hit the like button and if you want to check out the channel we got 120 something bagger related videos there's a ton check out the channel and make sure you hit that subscribe button guys that's what keeps us coming out here into the shop and doing these videos for you all of our videos are always free all the time we don't ask for donations we don't do patreon we don't do any secret squirrel facebook things we have to pay us money to join and all everything is free all the time on this channel so make sure you check us out find us over on instagram find us over on facebook if you want to get a hold of some bagger swag that's where you can find it over on Facebook. We do a pre-order about five, six times a year. Put your order in, you get t-shirts, hoodies, koozies, all that good stuff. But find us over there. But I'm gonna let you guys get back to the video. I just wanted to stop a second and let you guys know that I appreciate the hell out of every one of you guys. Back to it. Now, whatever bars you're getting ready to replace on there, you need to look on the bottom of them and see if there's a small hole drilled to the side of where your wires came through. If there's not a small hole there, you need to knock this pin. You see this little pin right down in here? This uh, pin on the stock bars goes into a small hole on the bars and it uh, puts them exactly where they need to be. So you can't, you have no control over the up or down. Most aftermarket bars do not have that hole. So you just want to drive that pin down or you can try to pull it out. We normally just get something and we drive it down. You want to drive it down flush like that. Then when you set your new bars in here, you have access to moving the bars up and down. Now, if you look on the back of our switches right here, we've got a little piece that comes up. It's a tab that comes up and locks under the front. Uh, usually, I take a little pick and just kind of pop that up and push that over with my thumb. Just be very careful on this part here. You have a ribbon down here at the bottom. You do not want to tear that ribbon up. Once you loosen that, you can pull it forward and off the handlebars. And of course, you just want to repeat it on the other side. Pop it up just like that. So basically, you're just popping this little piece up right here. You're going to push it forward, making sure that you don't damage that ribbon. You're going to get that off right there. So on the left side here, you can kind of start to push this in. You can see that wire start to move down there. You want to get it set in there. Pull the wire. Do not pull on the switch. You can go ahead and start pulling this out. Just like that and get that one out of the way. Now on this side, remember we had the big throttle by wire that we have to depin. So in order to depin this connector, you're gonna need a couple of picks and uh, like a paper clip or a safety pin or a actual depin tool, which we don't have. But right here on the back side, I've, I've stripped back some of this Tessa tape so we can see the color of the wires. And from here, it's a good idea to go ahead and take a picture of both sides of this so you can see where the wires go back in because you have three on top and you have three on bottom. On the back side of this connector here, you see these two little slots here. You can get under this white cap and push up. Gives you just enough room to push that up You'll kind of hear it click and you'll know that that's all the way up. That releases that. Now, from here, you want to take a paper clip or a safety pin and right down at the bottom of these clips, there's a little slot. You want to get this into that slot, push down until you hear a click. Once you hear a click, 
you can pull the wire out on the back side. And I reassure you that there is absolutely nothing fun about this process. Just want to get under it until you hear a click, and then you can see that wire pull out like that. You can pull that right out just like that. So I'm going to cut the camera and go ahead and get the rest of these removed. So once you get that D-pin, guys, you can go ahead and fold this up together like that and go ahead and pull your wires out. Now with this side being a little bit different because you've got your wires for your switches and you got your wires for your throttle by wire. This is the big one that we just de-pinned. So you can actually start pulling that out and feeding that through. You don't want to pull real hard on it. You don't want to mess up any of the wires on the end of it. Like in the beginning of the video, I said that we've got some holes here on the end and we've got holes here on the end. So there's a couple of ways to pull wires on these bars. Uh, most bars don't have these holes with the cap, so you would literally have to pull the wires through all of your bins. And I've seen a million different ways of doing this. Taking this kind of uh, ceiling fan switch chain stuff, which we've used this one several times. I've seen this black sheathing uh, used before. You can expand this stuff pretty big. And uh, basically, once you get these in here and you pull on it, it kind of works like a uh, Chinese finger trap. So you pull it, and as you're pulling it, it just holds it really tight. These bars, we can pretty much put this stuff through and come out the hole, tuck it back in, run it down, pull it out, tuck it back in, run it through the middle. So we don't need a whole lot of string and stuff to do this with so let's just go ahead and pull the wires on these now remember these are the road six customs uh, so they're a little bit different uh, than the other bars but actually a little bit easier to uh, pull now with the wires that we depend to keep this from kind of bending over and getting clumped up in there i'll go ahead and tape those up you've got another plug that comes off that side uh, for your heated grip so we're not putting those on we'll tape it to it to keep it from bending over as well so we'll start by putting our throttle by wire in it's usually stiff enough take the paper off of it so the paper doesn't get caught up on anything we'll go ahead and pull that through and put our switch wires through just like that we've got both of those pulled through now we can actually pull these through i'll pull my throttle by wire up just like that so once we get these pulled all the way through i'll go ahead and tape these wires together this green plug right here is one that you really need to pay a lot of attention to this could pull apart in three different places here so we actually put you don't want to gob this tape up really thick, but put it on there tight like that. Just keep going around it until you have all of the wires taped together. So that way when you're pulling on it, you're not just pulling on that one plug. You're kind of pulling on all of them. You're going to notice that your wires aren't the same length coming out the end. So I go down to the end. I'll pull it up to where it's even. We'll tape that off. So now we pretty much just have one wire. You're going to take a piece of string, chain, whatever you got, put a nut on it for the weight. But we're going to put this nut through here. Just let gravity pull it down. Out that bottom hole. I'm going to pull it down to the other end. I've actually got two strings on this one because I've used it for different. We're going to tape it to the end of this the tubing stuff works pretty good too just depends on how you want to do it some of you guys may not have this stuff laying around but surely you've got a nut and uh, some tape and a some sort of string you can pull your throttle out a little bit to get that big green plug out of the way and pull that back out and set that off to the side and then feed this back through it's going to start going down you use your chain to pull it get that in there 
start pulling it and we're actually coming out the bottom now so we can grab onto that wire instead of just using the chain and we can just feed this down once you get all this pushed in your throttle go ahead and clamp this back up on here it's okay right there we'll set that later when we put it on the bike but uh from there from there you're going to do the same thing put your nut back on stand these up and get the wires out of the way now drop our nut through When that drops through, we'll get a pick and pick it out of the middle there. Just like that. Pull it all the way through. And we're gonna start pulling this back through. Let's kind of feed it in. Pull it up just like that. Now, because we already have it there, we can go ahead and get to that tape right there. We can take it off so it's not so thick. Just like that. Do the other side. Now we can take all this electric tape off, our string and stuff, and go ahead and do the other side. So from here, we can go ahead and put our Molex connector back on, guys. It just goes back together the same way that we pulled it apart when we depend it. Leave this cap up. We're going to push these in from the back side and listen for the click. So the top of this, where the clip is on this 15, when we took it apart, had the gray, the purple, and the red across the top. And if you flip it over, you're gonna have the brown, the blue, and the black. And to make sure that you put these in correctly, this little square on the end, you'll have to look at yours, but it'll have a thick part and a thin part. The thick part goes towards the outer edge. So it's kind of a square, so it can go in there several different ways. So we'll start with the gray one over here, thick part to the top. We'll push it in until it clicks. Like that. And then you've got the purple. Make sure that that thick part is facing the top, outer edge. Put it in till it clicks. And then we have the red one. We have to twist it to make sure that the thick parts to the top once again. Put it in till it clicks. big fingers like me you can use a pair of needle nose to finish pushing it in and once you have those in just simply push this cap back down all the way until you hear it click all the way down and those are reconnected now we certainly have the hard side done the other side is just a single wire over on your left grip with this side go ahead and get that sticker out of the way like we said before now on this side, I won't necessarily take it out here and back in and down because we just have the one wire. So I went ahead and fed it through and down the tube and I will come out here. It just makes it a little easier to get over here. Got it coming out the bottom now. Can actually get this one up here and set it nut back down the middle again just like we did the top get your little hook and fish it out once you get it pulled out just go ahead and take your tape and your uh, string or chain or whatever you're using off now we have everything ready to put back on the bike. Now, in order to get all of your wires pulled up, you've got two zip ties on this cable over here. It goes around the tree here. It goes around the tree over here. Cut those off, pull those out. Now, once you get those cutting out of the way, this panel up here that has your switches in it, you're going to pop that down just like that. And you'll see on the back side here, three Christmas tree mounts. You can actually just cut those with a pair of side cutters just like that and then 
these pull out a lot easier you've got one here this is going to release this uh wire over here this back one over here is going to release this wire so it's going to give you some more room now you've got your three clips right here you just take a flathead screwdriver and you're going to want to pry those out and once you have those out you can take that flat piece out now what that's going to do is give you more room with all of these wires so when you set your bars back in here and you pull your perches back up you've got a lot more length on this go ahead and put our clamp back on So just remember, before you do your final torque on here and put your gauges and stuff back in, you're going to want to set on the bike and turn the handlebars. Make sure your perches aren't hitting your windshields or anything like that. You can jam these bars pretty far up forward, but that doesn't allow for movement. So before you get all this buttoned up, make sure to turn your handlebars fully to the left and fully to the right and make sure that you have clearance. For the wires now, we've got our throttle by wire hooked back up tuck it back in the one that has the double wire goes all the way to the right here plug it in listen for the click your little single there your smaller one and then you've got your last one pull it in pull it listen for the click on the throttle side you're going to slide your grip on make sure that the gears in this grip Go on here and make sure it's fully set, just like that. You're gonna slide your switch housing back over to the edge of your grip, and you'll see this groove on here on the grip actually matches a groove inside here. So when you put your switch housing back on, your cover, it goes over the grip, and the back side's gonna do the same thing. So we make sure that this doesn't fall off. And once you have that set in place, you can set the back cap and go ahead and tighten it down. So we've got it a little too tight, twist the grip and it's sticking. So we're gonna back that off a little bit. We're gonna pull this a little bit more towards the grip. You know, a little play in there, not a lot. There's a fine line between having too much play and not enough. So if you pull it and it sticks, you need to back it off a little bit you don't want to back it off too much because then these gears out here barely be touching and you'll end up stripping it out perfect we're going to do the exact same thing on this side we're going to slide the grip on now depending on what type of grip that you have on here you may have to re-glue this we're putting the stock one back on for now just to show you how it goes on but follow the directions that came with the grips that you got uh, I know some of the RLMS ones like we have on the Street Glide doesn't have this lip right here that the ring goes around. So you basically just put this back together, pull it over to the edge of the grip, and then glue the grip on. Now the stock one was actually glued on and had the, the clamp around it right here around this ring. So just follow the directions that you have with your grip. We chewed these up pretty bad trying to get the glue off as you can see. But I'm just going to install these back so you can see how it's done. You're gonna slide this back over to it's at the edge of the grip. We're gonna put our front on. Slide our backs on, same way we did the other side. Now on these, I don't fully tighten these down. I just snug them up and actually get them into place. I still can move them. That way later on, when we set on the bike, we can adjust, make our final adjustments, where we want the switches, what angle we want the switches. If we change the angle of the bars, it's gonna change the angle of the switches. Now with the perch clamp on the road glide, it's a little bit different. A lot of these, they have a pin inside here and there'll be a hole in the bars and your stock bars for that pin to slide into. If you don't have holes in your bars, maybe you're doing a different set of bars than we are. The Road 6 Customs, the road glide specific bars, actually have the hole in there so that pen will set right in there and it'll tell you exactly where to put the clamp so if you're doing a set of bars that you don't have that hole in there it's no big deal on the road glide it's got that pen grind that pen off smooth that'll also 
let you adjust stuff. So maybe you get it in there and you don't have enough adjustment in there where you need it. You can still grind that off. The clamp itself is going to cover that hole. So it's not a big deal. I like to have a little bit more adjustability in mine. So I go ahead and grind mine off, but you're going to pull your perch back up into place. Now you see, you've got a slot, very specific slot here where this has to go. So if it won't go, Another reason why we left this loose, you may have to bump this out just a little bit. So you don't want to glue that grip until you get everything done. And once again, we just want to snug those down because we're going to do a final adjustment at the end. Once you get that back on, you'll have to put your little tripometer button back on. It simply slides back on into place. So you start from the outside and you just push it in. Listen for the click. Make sure everything works. You're good to go. So on the brake side, you want to pull it up. You want to pull the lever in slightly and pop it into place it'll go right into place making sure that you have enough room in here and grab your clamp once again it's a lot easier if you have two people guys uh, but you can do it by yourself but you want to make sure that that brake is set in there on that button if you start tightening this down and it looks out of place in the back back here you don't have it in a place right the easiest way to do it is, like i said is just pull the brake lever in slightly and push it on and it'll go. So from here guys, what I like to do is just keep the quarter inch drive on an extension so I can kind of act like a screwdriver. I'll set on the bike, I'll turn the handlebars all the way to the left, all the way to the right, make sure none of my wires are pulling, pinching, any of that stuff. But the biggest thing is making sure that this perch isn't coming up when you turn fully and hitting the windshield. If it is, you're gonna have to pull your bars back a little bit. So now that we have the handlebars exactly where we need them, we can go ahead and plug all this stuff back in up here. Uh, we've got the one large throttle by wire on this model that we plugged in, and we have the single wire from the left side plugged in to the left, and the double to the right. Everything works, so we're just gonna put the wires back in here. You wanna leave the one out for your central gauges. From here, we'll go ahead and slide this back up into place. We'll plug in our dummy switches back here. Plug in the central switch that goes to our gauges. All we have to do is run our two screws back in the sides. Once you have your ignition back on, you want to go through all of your controls, all of your thumb controls to make sure that everything works. So that's pretty much it, guys. That gets rid of the stock lay in your lap handlebars uh, that Harley Davidson sends us. And it leaves us with a really nice set of custom bars on the road glide. So I know there's a ton of videos already on the road glide on the handlebars that are pretty easy to change. Uh, there's a lot of different brands on the market. Lots of videos on YouTube. 13 inch bars on this bike on the road glide no changing cables and wires and all that good stuff no wire extensions 13 inch you can do the little stuff we showed you inside there and actually pull the wires up and they fit they do offer these in different sizes though however and they got a couple of different flavors over there as well check out road sex customs i'll put the link down in the description so i hope this video helped you guys if you guys know the deal if there's any comments or questions or anything like that drop it in the comment box down below check youtube every day and i'll try to help you the best that i can i'm gonna get out of here and get my butt back to work until the next video as always be safe Keep your knees in the breeze. Thanks for checking out the YouTube video, guys. If you like what you see, make sure you hit the subscribe button over here. Over 100 bagger related videos on our YouTube channel. But to get you started, maybe you can check out this one or this one. Just one of them. Not really going to say anything else. Just, just click the button, man. It'll just.